I would I would not say I'm obsessed with Wizard of Oz in any way, shape, or form. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. In a year I spend on Wizard of Oz collectibles, I would say between $57,000 to $62,000 a year. I've been collecting Wizard of Oz for, I would say, about 19 of my 21 years. I specialize in collecting dolls and anything, mainly dolls, but from the era of when the movie was initially released. I would say I'm more of a movie collector rather than Wizard of Oz the book, but I love everything Oz. I can't really just hold favorite to something. It's really what catches my fancy is what I collect. I wouldn't say obsessed, I'd say I'm oz -sessed. The ideal scarecrow um, was kind of an interesting story in itself. I had been going through Collectors United, which was a paper at the time for collectors to go to. Along the way, I had called the lady and I had talked to her and I had uh, said, well, who do I make the check out to when I was paying for the item or paying for the scarecrow? And she uh, said, make it out to Shirley Temple Black. And I was, I was kind of floored. It was uh, Shirley Temple. I was on the phone with her having this conversation. I didn't really know up until the end when I asked who do I make the check out to. The most expensive item that I have that is worth money and that I paid so far would probably be the Western Costume Ruby Slippers. They were limited edition for 500 pairs. They were made using Judy Garland's last from uh, the shoemaker's last, which is what they use to make shoes. And so. I would say those were probably the most expensive items. Those were 5,000 I paid. My family reacted at a young age. They thought it was kind of peculiar. They just thought it was weird. They didn't really know. My mother kind of fed the fire. She was like, it's his desire. Let him do what he wants. Let him collect what he wants, you know? We would go on hunts together. And Oz has kept me distracted sometimes in a good way, other than a negative way. Um, sometimes in a negative way, you lose touch with the world and you don't know what's going on, you lose current events and things. But in a good way, Oz kind of kept me together during hard points in my life when my mother had passed away. And when I really felt distant from a lot of other things, I kind of pulled myself closer to Oz because it was familiarity of home. Well, The Wizard of Oz has been a huge influence on American culture. I, I think that the television broadcasts have had a lot to do with that because it's, it's been around for so many years and, and been so readily available. It's become so recognizable. People make reference to it all the time in this country. Everyone knows it. Uh, editorial cartoons, references in other books and movies. I, I know there's kind of a joke, I think in the, the film industry, that every movie that's been made since The Wizard of Oz contains some sort of reference to it. I think people in America connect with the movie The Wizard of Oz because of the parents and, and grandparents that grew up with it and now they can share it with, uh, with their children and grandchildren and not be afraid to, to all share it together. It is something that can be enjoyed by old and young alike. This is nothing for which I have to manufacture the enthusiasm. He hit me over the head with a plank and pushed me off a pier and then say, okay, John, you have to talk about Oz. And I'd be like, yep, yeah, I can do that. My whole exposure to Oz happened, the evening it happened to so many kids of the boomer generation. The very first time the movie was on network television was November 3rd, 1956. And I was a five-year-old kid in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Nothing really prepared me for the way The Wizard of Oz hit me that night. I just fell in love with the whole thing. I always say that the other nine people in the room, my cousins, my mom and dad, my aunts and uncles, they had a lovely evening and I had the life-changing experience because I talked of nothing else after that. For my sixth birthday, about three weeks after the film was on TV, I got a Wizard of Oz picture book. And uh, it was the next summer that I realized that on the copyright page of the picture book, it said, this book is an abridgment of whatever. And I asked my mother, what is an abridgment? And she said, well, it means it's a shorter, and I went, Shh, you mean there's a longer one? There's more? You know, where's the longer Wizard of Oz? I gotta have the longer Wizard of Oz book.
And then the summer I was seven, the real line of demarcation was crossed. I was in the um, book department of Gimbel's department store in downtown Milwaukee. I'm looking at children's books, and there, on a shelf, The Road to Oz. I remember how the book felt. I remember how it smelled. I remember that it had this beautiful John Arneal oil painting on the cover. I couldn't believe what I was holding. And then, to compound it, I opened the book, and on the back dust jacket flap, with the heading, The Oz Books, there's a list of 38 titles. I guess my first real professional Oz Association came uh, with the 50th anniversary. And uh, two other gentlemen from the International Wizard of Oz Club and I did the 50th anniversary coffee table book. And when that was in the works, MGM Home Video found out I was doing this, so they hired me to work on their 50th anniversary videotape. And then because that videotape took off you know, in a way that nobody expected it to, MGM Home Video put me on the Today Show and on Entertainment Tonight and on CNN, and all of a sudden, um, I was this kind of visible Oz spokesperson. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a real honor thing. I consider this a, a kind of a colossal privilege to be considered worthy of, of sharing all this. I think it was in the late 1970s that there started to be Wizard of Oz festivals around the United States. A lady started a, a Yellow Brick Road gift shop in Chesterton, Indiana shortly thereafter. The Yellow Brick Road um, began in 1978. We're pretty much all Wizard of Oz. Uh, we're, we, we call ourselves a specialty store. And uh, we have anywhere from water globes to bookmarks to tape measures. The Wizard of Oz Festival here in, in uh, Chesterton uh, was started by the Yellow Brick Road and Jean Nelson in 1981. She knew of a munchkin couple. It was Parnell St. Alban and uh, Mary Ellen St. Alban. They had a bar up in Chicago and since it was only an hour from the store here she went up and introduced herself and said would you like to come down for a one-day event you know in our little town of Chesterton. Mary Ellen and Parnell did come come down and it drew about 900 people that very first year and the following year uh, Parnell contacted some of his other Munchkin friends. The year we had the most of the original Munchkins I think was in the mid 80s and there was 21 of the original Munchkins here. They estimated 80 to 100,000 people who had attended in the small town. The well, first time I was here was in 1974. I, I, I thought I was in heaven. I just couldn't believe that there was the Yellow Brick Road and Dorothy's house and cyclone hits and and seeing char the characters live, you know, walking around talking and that. I'd never seen that before. Well, I'll see you safely get to the wizard now, whether I get a brain or not. Whether I get a heart or not. Oh, you two are the best friends. Would you like a sticker? My mom, she, she read me the book first. Then she sat me down in front of the TV when it was on and I watched it. And from then on, that was the beginning. The Wizard of Oz is so popular today because it's, it's a classic. It, it has all of those same virtues that remain today. No place like home, uh, courage again, and and uh, and love. The Wizard of Oz to me means uh, a, a kind of an envisionment in, a, in some way, an encompassment of home, heart, and the courage, and having you know the brains to go out in the world and find yourself. It's a journey of self-discovery. We we always say the age range for Oz fans is from fetal to fatal. Because if you go to one of these festivals, you see kids two years old dressed in, in, in blue and white check gingham or in scarecrow costumes or cowardly lion costumes or winged monkey costumes, wicked witch, whatever. A um, lot of ruby slippers. And we saw this in 89 and okay, fine. Well, it's been going ever since. I think as long as that film still speaks to children, it's going to keep on holding on. 
And the proof positive is that everywhere I go to an Oz event, it's still kids. It, it just isn't going away. Through hills and through dells In a world full of pink and blue Easter egg shells And if you are quiet The trees will ring bells In the wonderful land of Oz Now mushrooms are purple And bluebells are white And the moon paints the rivers With silver at night Wherever you look There's a magical sight In the wonderful land of Oz where, oh, where could you find mountains that touch the sky? Look there up on the top, there is a tree hanging clouds out to dry. 